In this video, we're going to have a look at how to create a 3D footing. We're going to do this with the beam tool. And to create this beam tool, we're going to create it as a complex profile. But here we see a standard relationship in ARCHICAD between a wall and a slab. When we go into the settings of these, this wall has been created as a complex profile. Sorry, a composite. It's called a brick veneer wall and this slab is just a basic slab it's currently got um, a building material called solid fill and I can change that to one here called concrete what we're going to do is put a section marker through here just to see what this looks like Let's change this material, see if we can find a, a better one. That's the one that we want. So we'll take the true line weight off. So we, we see that we've got four different building or five different building materials. We've got a plasterboard lining, a timber frame, a cavity, a brick, and concrete. And this is true in terms of the material representation, but the construction detail is bad. It's not true. We need to adjust it. And ARCHICAD doesn't give us a really simple way of doing this. So we need to get a little bit fiddly in order to create this. One thing that I'm going to do um, to make sense of this as well is to put a detail marker around this. When we put a detail marker around something, we create a copy of it that creates a two-dimensional representation of this and that's going to be important just for me to show you uh, in, in what I'm doing, what I'm trying to create. So let's open this up. So again, let's now turn this into a two-dimensional representation. Now what I don't do is uh, use this information, instead I copy this information and create our own. So under details I'm going to go create a new independent detail and we'll call this brick, let's use capitals, veneer footing. All right, and paste. Now the reality is that I want this to probably be more like at a scale of one to 10. And now we can see all the materials that we want in a little bit more detail. Now, in order to represent this properly, what I'm going to use is a different pen. I'm going to change the color of this, not because the color matters, but just so you can see what I'm doing. To make this work, we need to shorten our slab. So we need to cut this slab back to here. and get rid of that line. See if I can find a brighter red for you. There we go. We need to maybe bring those bricks down another. Let's do it two bricks. So we'll call it 170, not 172, just to be a little bit simpler. Just means the bricklayer is laying eight mil of mortar as a bed instead of 10, but that's really not an issue. So that's brick, so we can copy this fill, paste it there. I use the magic wand there. And then we're going to draw a footing. And so to make this footing work, we're just going to measure it quickly here. So we're going to make it 600 deep from the top of the slab. We're going to make it 400 wide from the edge of our wall. Once we get 100 millimeters from the slab, we're going to chamfer that at a 45 degree angle. That's going to come back in line with this edge. That's going to meet up there. And then we close this shape. down at the bottom of this brick. And then how do we finish that? We, we put more concrete in there. Now this is a, a two-dimensional representation. It's not completely accurate. There's some detail that we're missing, but the point is we're not trying to draw this correctly at a scale of one to one. 
while we're drawing this at 1 to 10, this footing is actually going to be used to represent our building at 1 to 100. So we don't need too much information. We want to keep it a little bit simple. So we've got some of this information, and I've deliberately done these this way. So what we're going to do is to take this information and copy this, or cut this, copy. And we're going to create a complex profile. In our Profile Manager, we're going to create a new, we'll call this Brick Veneer Footing. And I'm going to paste, right click, paste. I don't want to paste it in the original, I want to paste it in the current position. Now, my fills are a little bit hard to understand at the moment because they don't have an outline edge. So I'm going to click on the outline edge to make more sense of that. I could represent each of these bricks individually, but it's not what I want to do for a 1 to 100 drawing. Now, where do I want to place this? I have to remember how this sits in relationship to my building. This point here is the outside edge of my wall sitting at ground level. So this is my reference point. So I'm going to move my footing to this reference point. This is currently based on me having a 100mm slab, as we can see there. And so I just have to remember that. I can, if I want to, add some more hot spots, which are these little dots down the bottom. And I sometimes make them red just so they are a little bit more visual, visually identifiable. And the really nice thing about these hot spots is they allow us to grab this point. So I like adding a few hot spots just to make it really easy to see. We can also stretch this as well. So we can allow for a, a horizontal stretch, a vertical stretch, an opening reference. And that allows us to stretch the depths of these if we want to as well. I'm not going to worry too much about that at the moment. Once we're finished with this, we can see that we're, when we select each of these materials, we're actually choosing them as a building material, not just a fill, but a building material. And that's really important because we want the relationship of this fill to line up with or to work with the relationship of our slab once we've finished this. So once we've finished, we're going to say, what do I want to use this for? I want to use this as a beam. I don't need to use it as anything else. Store profile. That's now saved. I can close that down. I'm going to keep this, but I don't need to use it at the moment. Now if I go back to my floor plan, we see that we've still got our slab and wall in relationship. They're not really doing much else. What we're now going to do is to add our footing to the bottom of this. So when I select my footing, my beam tool, I could place a rectangular or basic shape or I could make this into a complex profile. I'm going to choose my complex profile from this list. It's going to automatically assign the the thickness, the whole width of that was 500 millimeters, and it will automatically assign the middle, but in this case it's the reference line. So this is the outside edge. I'm going to stretch this, and I'm going to make sure it's at the right height. So I want this to sit at zero to this floor. I want it to be flat, I don't want it to be on a slope, I don't want it to be on an angle. And I don't want to override these materials either. I want these to be as they are. So we can view this in 3D. We now see that there's a relationship happening here, but what's wrong? What did I not change yet that I needed to change in my relationship? I haven't changed... Let's undo this for a second, just so it makes more sense. I haven't changed where my slab sits. I need to set my slab back in. So going back to my lower ground floor, I can use my drawing as a guide. So I click on the edge, offset edge. I don't want to stop at the inside of the brick. I want to stop at the outside edge of the timber frame. Let's view that again in 3D. So now that we have a relationship of how this 
brick wall is working. Uh, the reason why this is different is just because I overrode these settings as well. There we go. So we now have consistency of materiality. It looks right in 3D now. And let's have a look at what that does in section. And that's now pretty good in section. It's We've got a little line here, which is the continuation of this wall in our foreground. But in the scheme of things, that line doesn't matter. I could override that. I could put a fill to cover it. Um, it's, it's showing the way that I should. And at a scale of 1 to 100, we need to remember what this will actually look like. At 1 to 100, this is going to be so small that we're not really even going to see it. So that's great. That's showing exactly how I want to. And the great thing about having a detail marker, and that's why I don't use detail markers to draw, I use them as a reference, is when we open this, we can also update this. And that's now going to show me a 2D version of that 3D detail that we've created with the beam tool.